Well, hello there. Um, today, as you can see, our objectives are to introduce the Babylonian method for computing square roots, as well as to show you how to uh, use that algorithm to effectively compute square roots using a spreadsheet and a Python emulator. So let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of theory. So here is what the Babylonian method says. This was actually invented about 2,000 years ago, so they knew about square roots even back then. It's kind of cool. So let's say that I wanted to compute the square root of s where s is square free, because if it were a number like 4, well, clearly 2 times 2 is 4. So to compute the square root of s, we're going to go ahead and let x naught be an initial guess. So I'm not going to go into how close x naught needs to be for this to work, but just give it your best shot. Then, in order to get the next best estimate, x1 is going to equal the average of two things, the first one being x0 itself, and the second one being the radicand s, this radicand s, divided by x0. Okay, so if that's x1, that is your new initial guess. So then x sub 2 is going to be based on x sub 1. So what do you think x sub 2 is going to be? x sub 2 is going to be the average of x sub 1 and s divided by x sub 1. Let's just do one more, make sure that we got it. Okay, so x sub 3 would equal what? It would equal 1 half x sub 2 plus s divided by x sub 2. Okay, so you can continue this however many times you'd like, and this is going to continue on and on and on until maybe your nth guess is 1 half of x sub n minus 1 plus s divided by that x sub n minus 1. Okay, so of course you can let this be as accurate as you want. Now let's do a quick example before I move over to the spreadsheets. So, uh, example. Estimate. What should I have you estimate? Estimate the square root of 15. Okay, well, to compute the square root of 15 and to do what your calculators do, we have to have an initial guess. What do you think our initial guess should probably be? One. No, I'm kidding, of course. No, it's going to be close to the square root of 16, which is about 4. Okay, so let x not equal 4. Then, according to our procedure, which I need you all to kind of compute with me, because why, why, why would you program something that you have had no experience with computing by hand? You should always do stuff by hand first, kind of like division. x1 is just going to be the average of 1 half, or sorry, it's the average of 4 and 15 divided by 4. This one, you can actually do it by hand. I distributed the 1 half, so I got 2 plus 15 over 4 times 2, which is just 15 over 8. Then I found a common denominator, so that's 16 over 8 plus 15 over 8, okay, which is 31 over 8, which is approximately 3.875. So I'll box it because that's our, our first guess. And now you would use x sub 1 in your new best guess, which we're going to call x sub 2. So x sub 2 is 1 half times x sub 1, which remember was 31 eighths. And I don't know why I put the approximately. This is actually exactly equal. You can use the decimal if you want. I'm going to go ahead and use the fraction. Doesn't really matter. But this is going to be the average of 31 eighths and 15. It's still going to be this radical, this, this radicand right here, 15 divided by 31 over 8. Okay, so I could show you all the messy details to this, but that's not really the point. Uh, so this is going to be now approximately equal to 
8729837. Okay, now I'll go ahead and box this. That was just the second iteration of this. I'm not going to do a third, but instead I'm actually going to compute the square root of 15 and approximate it for you. So that's going to be approximately equal to, now remember, this is going to go on forever and it's never going to repeat. So I'm only going to go out so far, but it's 3.87298 Okay, so about at this point right here is when it starts to become different. And if you'll notice, that is going to be accurate. So that is accurate to 10 to the minus 7 precision. And that's just after two iterations. Now granted, our initial guess was pretty good. And in general, the closer you are with even something like Newton's method, the closer your initial guess is to the actual answer, the faster it's going to converge. But that just goes to show you how powerful these things are. So um, I'm going to meet you over back at Google Sheets. We're going to do a little messing around with this algorithm to see if we can produce the same thing. See you there. Here we are over at Google Sheets. You can just go and type in sheets.google.com and open a blank document. And we're going to go and get started. So what did that method require of us? Well, it required two things. First, it required some sort of S that we used as the radicand of our square root. Okay, so maybe here I'll type in S and we're going to let S be uh, the square root of 15. So S would just be 15. Okay, the other thing that the method required was it required some sort of uh, x of 0, some initial guess, which our initial guess was 4. Okay, so now I'm actually going to start Newton's or the Babylonian method over here, and we're going to just create a table, and we're going to make a, a function in Excel. I know I keep saying Excel for spreadsheets. They're kind of the same thing. So we're going to make a function in sheets that is going to do exactly what we want. And we can use all the nice math equation stuff. And you might be wondering why we don't just use square roots. Well, we're this is a teaching exercise to show you where the square root comes from. So we're only allowed to use addition, multiplication, division, subtraction. It's pretty cool. So um, I guess we're going to let this be our next guess, x sub n. And what is what is that going to equal? Well, the first one, maybe maybe we should just let this be x sub 2, just to, just to demonstrate. Okay, so I'm going to let this be x sub 2. Okay, I meant x sub 1. And what is that going to equal? Well, it's going to equal 1 half x0 plus s divided by x0. Okay, but unfortunately, Excel doesn't really understand variables and how they're stored as certain values. So you really can't do that necessarily. But I do know that x0 is right here. It has the value 4, but instead of 4, I'm going to be very careful to only put in the cell number, which is b2. Okay, so instead of x0, I'm going to replace that with b2. And also, since this isn't really an equation right now, I have to put the equal sign. Now it's going to recognize everything that I want. Okay, so this is b2, which is highlighting this cell. I don't know what s is. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say that S is just 15, okay, because that's, that's never really going to change, um, and that's going to be divided by B2 as well. Now, I think what I'm going to want to do, actually, is I'm going to take this, we're going to cut it and paste it over here. Now the equation should look like that, and it gives us an error. Why is it giving us an error? Well, it's because A, this one half isn't in parentheses, and B, it doesn't recognize, it doesn't recognize that these are being multiplied. You have to actually put in this asterisk symbol. And now it gives you our first initial guess, which is 3.875. Okay? Now, if I want x sub 2, all I'm going to do is just drag this down. And what just happened? Well, this is now based on the previous cell. So instead of B2, it is now going to be, 
or yeah, so instead of B2, now it's looking at this as its initial guess. So it's going to take the average of this plus 15 divided by this. Okay, so that's how sheets works. Okay, it basically takes one thing and it bases it off of that one. Okay, so the next cell is based on the previous cell and the next one's based on that previous one and it keeps going on forever. Okay, so I can keep doing this as much as I want and I don't have to keep labeling it x3, x4 because that's kind of tedious. I can just drag and it continues to just give me iterations. And honestly, this is so accurate that the square root of 15 that I gave you on the other document, the PDF, here are all the digits that I gave you. It's not going to be any more precise than this, okay? Because even Excel has a limit, and I think he specified what he wanted you to round to on the uh, project. So that's just an example um, of how to do this in Sheets. So hopefully that explanation was okay. Just to summarize one final time, um, the radicand was 15. Our initial guess went here, and the equation for the next one, I just put in the algorithm, okay, which was one half times the cell B2, which was our first initial guess, plus the radicand divided by B2. Now, the reason that I don't put in B1 here is because then the next one is going to want that to be changed to B2. And since this will always be 15 for every single guess, uh, this needs to stay at 15. Okay, so just let's just do one more example. Uh, let's say that S is going to be equal to now maybe 22. Okay, so x sub 0 maybe is going to be, what, 5? And then as an exercise in sheets, you should go ahead and repeat everything that I did in this video to see if you can approximate the square root of 22. Okay, so that would show that you understand how to do this, and that should help you with Newton's method later on. So now I'm going to pull up a Python document, uh, an IDLE, and explain kind of how that works. We're going to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm going to show you the exact same thing in a couple of different ways, because especially if you're going into anything engineering or computer science, Python is going to be your friend. So I'll see you over there. All right, so one of the most important programming languages that you're going to run into in STEM is Python, so that's why I'm showing you this. So um, we are going to want to compute the square root of S when S is equal to 15. For example. Now, the reason that this is not a part of my code is because I put the little hashtag. The hashtag means that this is really a comment in the code, which is like a, an FYI BTW for anyone reading your code. Now, we're going to actually start the code, and just to kind of show you what we did in the Google Sheets, because we're going we're gonna to modify it in Python, because of course, different language, different syntax. Um, but what did we do in the Excel document? Well, we had some sort of initial guess, which we let equal 4. And the, the first initial guess after this was equal to what? It was equal to 1 half times x sub 0 plus the radicand 15 divided by x sub 0. Okay, so I just basically copy and pasted exactly what uh, was from Newton's method. And then the first thing that you might want to do is just see if x sub 1 is correctly computed. So the way you do that is just to print out what x sub 1 is. So these are instructions to tell your computer what to do. You are talent, you are the boss of your computer here. So if you want to print that first value, just say print x1. Make sure parentheses are around there and hit run. And hopefully you have an expectation for what it's going to be. Oh look, exactly what I expected, 3.875. Okay, so now going back over here, you might say, that's great. Now we're going to let x2 equal 1 half times x1 plus 15 divided by x1. Print x2. So I should have the, the, the first thing printed and then the better guess printed. So we don't need that. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, look, an even better guess that goes out to even more decimal places than Excel. And if you wanted a third guess, you could do the exact same thing. But here's the problem. I don't want to do that. Okay, I don't want to keep typing x1, x2, x3. So that's too much work. And as a programmer, or as a mathematician, I'm lazy. And I don't want to. So 
Here's what we're going to do instead. I'm going to erase this in a little bit, but I want to, I want you to see where this comes from. We're going to do what's called looping your code, which basically makes it so that you only have to do it once and the program just repeats it over and over and over. And we're going to print out a better guess every single time. Okay. So here's how it works. We have to use a, some sort of a dummy variable. So I'm just going to let it be little I because little I gets picked on a lot. Uh, for I in range 10 colon. Now, when you hit enter for the next line, notice that there's some sort of indent or tab going on. That's important. Okay. So for I in range 10, what do we want this program to do? Well, we're going to start off by changing X sub zero. Now this is going to be a weird concept, but we're not going to let X one equal this. We're going to let X zero equal this. This is probably the most difficult to understand beginner program concept. But when I say the equal sign in programming, I don't actually mean equals. Okay. This equal sign is like the same thing as so, so in programming equals really means it's an arrow. So X zero is being turned into something else. Okay, so x0 is going to be defined as this formula, where x sub 0 is equal to 4. So the computer stores x0 in memory. There's a literal physical location memory where it says x0 is 4. And now it's saying, okay, we'll redefine this, and we're going to transform x0 into 1 half times 4 plus 15 divided by 4. And in fact, just to show you that this is legit, let's just do it one time. Okay. And then after this, we want to print X zero. So this should do this a total of one time. Okay. And then when I hit run, let's see, what's the error? Oh, I see the error. See, parentheses, really important. Okay, there we go. So after I hit run now, these were for the past two times, right? Which I'm going to now delete. I'm going to delete these because we don't need that anymore. Now when I hit run, there should only be one thing printed, which is our first initial guess, 3.875. You might think, Mr. Roush, nothing has changed. Oh, that could not be further from the truth. I can now fix the range to be as many iterations of this as I want. So if I want it to be, say, three iterations, fine, hit run. It does this three times, and notice all of these are closer and closer to the actual value. If I wanted to do this ten times, go for it. There you go. The first ten iterations. Now, after this point, you know, your initial guess was so good that you know, even Python just kind of gave up after this many decimal places. There are ways of getting it more accurate, but that's kind of beyond the scope of this lesson. And that's what you get. Now, let's say that my initial guess was pretty off. Let's say it was like three. Do you think I'm still going to get the right answer? Well, let's see. Yeah. So not very close. My first, you know, after doing this, it got me four then 3.875, then, okay, something pretty accurate, okay, so maybe my initial guess, let's make it weird, let's make it like 3.1112, I don't know, something weird, and then when I run it, now it gets me something pretty off, and then something a little different, and then something a little different, and then by the fourth time, then it really cracks down, okay, so this really is, is quite versatile, and the reason that I like this so much is all you have to change for this program is if you want to compute a different square root is this number. That's the square root you're computing and this number, which is your initial guess. So if you wanted to do the square root of say, you know, 45, your initial guess is probably going to be somewhere like seven. And then this is going to be changed to 45. And then if you want to run a hundred different whatever, go for it. Click run. And you get all this fun stuff.
which after three iterations, by the way, gets it to you uh, in 10 decimal places. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. I demonstrated the Babylonian method both by hand as well as using computer software such as uh, Excel and Python, both of which are extremely important and I recommend that you choose either for your project.